film medic. I am your host, da 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 the film doctor. And the film, sir. Okay. Damn. I, I, you do this this whole pause. It's just like jump right in there. Mine so quick. Just jump right in. There. And we are back in the attic. Okay. <laughs> With another hot film to dissect. Finally, a hot film from the horror section. You know, it's, it's been a minute since we had hot. We've had some mild in there, though. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. What, uh, it's a reboot, right? So it's just 2022. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's not a reboot. It's actually a continuation. I, yeah, but they didn't really call it anything different. So I'm not sure. If I, am I naming it, you know, fourth one in the series or what? It's just Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They didn't really give it a new name. So 2022. Okay. Whatever you, like, whatever you like to do, go ahead. <laughs> Coming to us from Netflix. You can catch us on Netflix. And uh, Netflix. Y'all got bread. Don't if you're it. ever looking to, um, you know, give out anything. Money. We're, we're basically asking <laughs> for money. And uh, Michael you know, was a little bit low on gas yesterday. Yes, $5 will get me pretty far. So if you guys can hook up that sponsorship, throw us a little change, maybe a free month of Netflix, that'd be great. You know, we're doing this for you. Shout out to Netflix. <laughs> so without further ado, oh, let me introduce, because everybody's looking at the screen. Uh, we have Brandon. Brandon, you can unmute yourself now and uh, introduce yourself to the people. We love to bring guests on here. And so we brought our friend on here to uh, kind of give his thoughts as well and kind of Go do a like a like a round table talk. How's it going, fellas? Yeah, my name is uh, Brandon Benfield. I uh, run my own company called Studio Forty Three Production and Design. I'm a booking agent for several actors, mainly from the Power Rangers universe, but trying to break into the field of horror too. You never know. Uh, go to a lot of horror cons. Uh, attend as a fan. Uh, I love meeting. My favorite uh, my favorite uh, thing to do at a horror con is to meet the killers, if you will. I like to meet the guys behind the, the mask. Um, you know, I actually, it's funny, we're talking about Texas Chainsaw. I actually met my first three Leatherface actors two weeks ago, three weeks ago, coming up this Sunday. So now, now I know about you, but Manny doesn't know that you go a lot of places and you, you have pictures with a lot of people and you and I definitely, we will have to ch chat off camera because I am a huge Power Ranger fan. Um, and actually I worked at a place where one of the guys, his, uh, his cousin is Zach, the original Black Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. So that's huge. Uh, but yeah. This leather face, one of the leather faces you met, uh, Mark Burnham? Um, I've met, uh, so two of them were from, uh, Texas Chainsaw 2. So Bob, Big Bob Elmore and, uh, Tom Morgo, who did the stunt scene on the bridge in the beginning. Um, and then I met Andrew, however you pronounce his last name, By Byronowski or Byronowski. He played Leatherface in the 2003 reboot of Texas Chainsaw and Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, the one that came out right after that. Okay. Oh, so you're Interesting have, guy. You, 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 so you're a fan of the franchise, so you'll have an in-depth opinion about it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> it's, I feel like it's been... Uh, rebooted several times and or just taken the title several times i think this is like the fourth the texas chainsaw massacre maybe third if i, <laughs> if I looked into it <laughs> well let's not waste any time let's jump right into our film review <laughs> So here we are talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Who wants to go first? Jump right in there. I'll jump in, Michael. Cause you always, you know what? You always got something to say about every review I do. So well, I mean, you, you give it. really shitty reviews. Let's just be honest. About I, I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm very fair and balanced. You know, I'm kind of like uh -huh. I hate to say this. I'm kind of like Fox News. I'm very fair and balanced. You, even though Fox I'm News sure that you thought that the Home Alone <laughs> that came out on Disney Plus was good. That's the kind of shitty review. No, I did not movie. say that. I'm, movie. I'm just saying. Just saying. I I watched about half. Well, I can't even say I watched half. I watched, I watched probably a third of that and had to shut it off. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't that great. I I distinctly believe why I asked you why are there six Home Alone movies? Did we really <laughs> need as two? No, we didn't. So and they're not even giving us the whole world that we want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was asking. So, but to jump into Texas Chainsaw Master, uh, I actually enjoyed this. Um, I think our last uh, horror review, which was 
Scream, which I guess is kind of just a slasher thriller, not actually horror, if you want to be super, super technical. Um, we kind of were saying uh, we felt like Hollywood kind of lost the magic of trying to really scare you to get the audiences to be scared. You know, we talked about the jump scare kind of tactics that they kind of use over and over again and how that's kind of played out in the audience is just, oh, looking for where's the next jump scare or where's this or where this. I feel like they kind of did a better job here of having having some frightening moments. Um, I thought they did a good job of that. Uh, as far as the story goes, you know, the story is okay. I mean, it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre story. Uh, does it have me yelling at characters who do stupid stuff on the screen? Obviously. Uh. <laughs> they really did straight. I mean, they still had those scenes where people were doing stupid yeah. stuff where it's like, bitch, don't, don't, don't reach for that. Like, you're about to, you are about to die if you do that. Don't do that. Like, so they had those moments. But like you said, I think that it was that factor that there were scary moments. Uh, and some of those were just terrifying just by him running at the screen right. or running in general. Like, I'm like, oh shit, shit's about, like, I'm actually, like, feel like I'm there and I'm scared with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, this guy, I mean, he throws that uh, chainsaw a few times like he was in shot put in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, just, I mean, a I chainsaw. I didn't say anything about that. Like, as a ninja star, I'm like, look. What? Yeah. I mean, th that could be a gripe. To me, I think that, that was one thing that I was just like, uh, is that really believable? Is that a turn off to you guys? Did you guys care about that? I mean, you can, if you're, if we're getting down to the nitty gritty and we're getting technical, yes, you can knock the film for that, but is it some huge takeaway that's going to drop the grade for me? No. Um, I just, you know, I enjoyed the story. I thought the acting was, you know, what it was for a horror film. Am I giving any Oscars or Golden Globes or Emmys here? Probably not, but still some good acting. Well, Still some good here's something the music that I, was fantastic. Uh, absolutely fantastic in this. I enjoyed the music. I thought they did a really... They were creative with the music, which I think helped with the frightening part of it. They, they did a good job on music here, too. Well, the other thing that I was going to say is that they kind of took away from that generic way of, like, let's have a group of people and they're kind of killed off one at a time. You know, right. I, we don't do spoilers on here. We're, we're working on like a spoiler clip that I can throw in there where, where we'll give spoilers. So we try not to let people know, you know, if this movie was good. So I'm trying to be careful in my words to say that um, there's a scene where he's uh, on a bus and there's a lot more people. And so it becomes a, a, a kind of deterrent away from like, okay, well, this is the group of friends. I'm going to kill this person and now I'm working to this person. Uh, and so that really was something that I kind of enjoyed. You know, I would have loved to see, like, the, it, we're talking about the Scream movie, like the Scream killer. I would love to have seen him inside of a carnival and he's just going around just fucking people up. You know what I mean? Like, that would have just been, like, right up there. Like, the Jason Voorhees of Scream guy, Ghostface killer, and, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. However, if this is a storyline that's like a continuation, the one thing that did kind of bother me was the mom or mother or grandmother whatever the hell she was to him like she she's not in any of the originals as a family member so how many family members does he have that he's living with um to me it just didn't make sense if you're going to continue that story then bring back the original people so the family is legit and that was my great that was actually my biggest gripe with this movie was the timeline doesn't make any sense so you're you're saying that this this woman is the is the survivor 50 years later from the original okay so it's like, wait a minute. So, and she, you, you know, how I don't know how much you want me to censor myself as far as spoilers, but you know, she's like, ah, it's you again, Leatherface. And it's like, hold on a second. So we've got this dude's mom who's still alive supposedly, but then we've got a survivor from 50 years ago. So how old is the mom? Set at 120 years old? I mean, <laughs> like, seriously, 95? Like, that's what didn't really make sense to me. And like, that was like, like I said, that was the biggest gripe is the timeline of it. You know what I mean? And so, but, but once you get past that, I feel like this movie is pretty fun. Like, and, and watching like a lot of, I've been watching a lot of the the Texas Chainsaw movies um, recently because A, I knew this new one was coming out and B, we were, you know, I was going to be meeting a few of them. So I wanted to kind of get a refresher. Mm -hmm. And I feel like watching the first three and then the 2003 reboot and then this one, 
This one was fun. Like, I, I feel like it's something that Leatherface hasn't had ever. Like, maybe a little bit in the 03 reboot, but I mean, it was fast paced. I mean, it was suspenseful. I mean, I don't know, like, meaning like you don't know where he's going to pop out of. And, you know, I just, I was very interested by it. So. And he was mysterious. You know, you, you didn't see his face. You didn't know a lot about his history and where he came from. It was just like he appeared out of nowhere. I would say that that could be something that could be a gripe, but I, I kind of enjoyed that. Like it was the focus on horror instead of an origin story because we've yeah. already seen that if it's a continuation. Yeah. Are you guys Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans at all? I am. So I don't know if you knew this, but Leatherface in this film, what he what the actor was the vampire from Lover's Walk episode of when uh, Spike comes back in season three. Um, okay. The guy that played Lenny, he was like, yeah, man, you've gotten soft like baby food. That's the guy playing Leatherface. So I thought it was kind of funny because I was like, well, I still feel like I've never seen that guy's face because he had a vampire face on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All in all, you said that it was it was enjoyable to watch. Can you, without spoiling it, what was one thing that you enjoyed that made it enjoyable? Um, you know, I feel like horror. We've we've lost a sense of the the character killer, um, and I feel like they're really trying their best to bring it back, kind of like what they were talking about in Scream, requels, where it's like they're trying to reboot it, but also be a sequel of same the same timeline and everything. And I feel like they're trying to bring and keep those characters alive as much as possible, whether they're doing it successfully or not, I think is character by character. But I feel like Leatherface in this one, like, you know, again, like you just said, we didn't have the family other than the mother. It was just him. So it's like, okay, we could focus solely on the guy who's famous for this franchise. And he was killing people very creatively. Um, you know, the, the I don't think this gives away too much, but the scene where the person was under the bed, Mm -hmm. and you know hiding and it's just like that was really that was a fun scene like i really enjoyed that um you know you didn't know kind of what was going to happen and when something did happen you're you know oh you know what i mean so i i i don't know it was it i feel like the progression of the story in that one you know for what a slasher movie is mm -hmm. uh worked really well i agree well there it is let's let's do a final round table vote what what's your grade on this if we're going A to F or A to E, I would have to say a solid B minus C plus because again, it, it did. Now those lack. are two different grades. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, C, C is average, average, you know, <laughs> and then B is like ooh better than average. So I, I say C plus is above average, and B minus is kind of like above that average yeah it's like it's it kind of it kind of goes back and forth for me the more i think about it between those two grades because it's like again the timeline thing is where i had a problem with it but again was it a deal breaker i would say it's about a half a deal breaker because it but i just it's something i had to get past you know what i mean whereas there was a few things like say in scream that i was like all right I, that's not a deal breaker for me i can keep going with this but you know with that that was kind of a big what what's going on there with that like that was not written well so that's why I kind of put it in the above average because I didn't hate it. I wasn't like, oh, I wasted my time with this. <laughs> like I felt with Halloween Kills. Sorry, if you guys love that movie, I just didn't, I didn't no, care for it. I, no. we, we did, no. did we review that? I think we reviewed that and I, I was so disappointed. That, that's, that's for another day maybe. <laughs> we'll have right. you back when they do Halloween ends because <laughs> I have so much to say, but go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I mean like that. And again, I, I watched Halloween Kills the extended cut thinking there might be some extra things there to make it make more sense. Wasted my time again, man. I was like, come on. <laughs> but with this one, I didn't feel like time was wasted. And I I liked it. I just, I don't know. I Again, I'm not saying it's, it should it have an Academy Award. Absolutely not. But I mean, again, could I see myself being bored on a Saturday afternoon, not having anything to watch and, you know, needed something to have in the background while I work? Yeah, I could put that on. As opposed to Halloween Kills or, you know, something else. Yeah. What about you, Michael? No, see, I knew you were gonna you were gonna try and get my grade so that you can jump in you, there Michael? and insult you, my Michael? grade. Um, but sometimes I do. I give two grades too. Uh, never on the, the different scale of average and and, and non. Well, no, I think I have done that maybe once. You or have time. done that multiple shut, times. Okay, shut shut the fuck up. No one asked you. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say that for all the horror movies that we have graded, I think that we've stuck in between. I don't know if we've even given the B minus and which one that would be, but I would say that maybe it's between a B minus 
and a C minus that we've given normal horror movies. And mm -hmm. I think that this was better than the normal horror movie, but those certain points that I brought up in terms of, like you said, the timeline and the grandmother and, and, and some of those things is like, well, I don't want to give it too high, but I also don't want to give it too low. Uh, I feel like if I give it that B, it's a little close to an A to say that you only need a little bit to work on to get it to that point. But if I give it that B minus, it's like, ooh, you're, you're in the same category as some of those other horror movies that we've given, uh, you know, a B minus two, uh, that we're graciously given that B minus two. Um, so I think I'm gonna be kind as always, and I'm gonna stick with my B rating. Uh, that's fair. Cause it's, so it was better than your typical horror movies. I have to give it that. That's a wee bit high for me. That's why I do the distinction. Uh, I don't think this is a B a B film. I'm gonna go B minus as, uh, as my rating. Um, uh, I that to me when you give it that B minus rating, like you're saying, it's putting it in the upper echelon of the horror films we graded. I mean, I'm pretty sure you did Get Out by yourself, and that wasn't A. So, is it Get Out? No. Uh, you I didn't know. give it a Get Out grade. Is it us? I'm pretty sure we did us too. I didn't give it an us grade. <laughs> it doesn't get an us grade. So B, I feel like B minus is fair. It's fair. It's entertaining. It's fun. Um, like you guys said, the timeline doesn't really match up. So that's a huge plot hole uh, that's gaping you in the face. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I, I can enjoy it. Uh, you know, I would not tell people not to not watch it if you haven't seen it at least check it out once you know i watched it and then i watched it again the next day and now that you guys bring it up because i ain't got shit to do tonight i think i'm gonna go watch it again just because we talked about three times it, fresh maybe, in my three mind. times maybe a bit much michael <laughs> okay this guy watched uh the harder they fall like five times in one day and he's gonna insult seven me. actually okay. seven times actually <laughs> so big, like a bigger loser okay that's fine well I, i've already watched scream 2022 probably three or four times so like i said i love it so i know you guys felt differently probably but yeah i we just we all have our things we love and I didn't honestly hate man it. i what's that i didn't hate it yeah it's fair <laughs> so here's how here's kind of how i like to look at movies too like i like to kind of look at them on the i, I always say birdman to batman and robin scale mm -hmm. um as far as replay value goes so you got a movie that's an Academy Award winner like Birdman, right? You can you can watch it, but it's like, I feel like watching that movie, and again, this is just my opinion, but I feel like that's one that I can only watch once. Like it was a good story, but I don't necessarily feel the need to see it again. But then you've got a movie like Batman and Robin where it's like, well, it's not necessarily a great story, but it's something I can watch over and over again because it's something I watched when I was a kid. And it's something that gave me joy. And it's something that, again, it's one of those things where it's like, if it's a rainy Sunday afternoon and I need to just put something on while I want to relax, it's a fun movie to watch. So I, I would say on the scale of Birdman to Batman and Robin, I would kind of put it more in a Batman and Robin, meaning like it's like I can watch it a little bit more as a replay value and, and it'd be okay still. It has replay value to it. Well, here's the thing, and I'm just curious, is, are, are you because you say Batman and Robin, and those are more established characters that we all know and love as that character. Nobody really knows or cares for Birdman. And, and even for it to have won uh, any awards that it, it won, I think that the the way that that's set up, it's not the people that are voting that. Um, in terms of the, the people that go to the the actual movies to see it, it's it's directors and producers and and whatever else that are inside of the union to be able to vote for it. Um, True. So, it, I, I mean, it's a good comparison because it, it goes from that good movie to that good movie, but it, uh, to differ between that award or that something that's enjoyable to watch. But yep. that's just my thoughts on you know Batman. Was it something that is because it's that enjoyable character? I would say it's more because of my youth and like the fact that I saw that movie as through kids, as a kid's eyes and it's something that I want. Okay, another good example. My favorite movie of all time <laughs> is uh, Surf Ninjas. Um, not something that you would say, again, is an Academy Award winner by any means, but it's something I've watched over and over again to the point where I'm now working it with the cast on signings. I love it so much. I mean, it's just so like, it's just so 90s nostalgia. I remember one time as a kid, I watched it three times in a row, like when I was like six. And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, if you fall in love with a movie, it doesn't matter if it's a bad story. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Like it, it just, it's something you can just keep watching over and over. I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but. Yeah, no. Like the harder they fall, Michael. It makes total don't, sense. Yep, don't, try and, don't try and circle back to that. Don't try and circle back to that. I see what you're but doing here. We'll have to, uh, 
I, I'd love to get your review on Scream and uh, the latest Power Rangers that, you know, I was hoping Saban would keep going, but they can't. Um, so hopefully that comes back around. Yeah, maybe, some... maybe we'll do it. Uh, <laughs> since they haven't done a movie, maybe we'll do a review on that since uh, I'm a huge fan of that. But, you know, this is the point. Where we're going to do something new. And just to find out if you're ever going to be allowed to come back here to Filmatic ever. <laughs> you will never be able to come back if you answer these questions wrong. All right, all right. Put, Two put questions. And I think okay. we're going to do it with every guest from okay. now on. All right. All right. Number one. Well, hey, 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 before you ask me, let me ask you this. If I answer them right or wrong, are you going to tell me whether or not I can come oh, back or not? Oh, definitely. Okay. All right. <laughs> you will know. You like will know. If I just see that you're not Facebook friends with me anymore, it's like, well, I guess I answered I, it, one. I'm telling you right now, if you answer the first <laughs> one wrong, immediately, I'm deleting you, okay? okay. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Vanguard with Jackie Chan? No. Okay, you can stay in my friends list. I don't even need good, to ask the second good for question. You. <laughs> second one is if you thought it was good, so. No, I have not seen it. Okay. And that's, and listen, trust me. You He's don't not a Vanguardian. Yeah, okay. you don't even need to watch it. <laughs> I got it. I mean, what do you do? What do you do to the guys that say yes? Uh, well, they're, they're they haven't been back since. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is, everybody. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell. Do all that jazz. Tie a little note to a pigeon's leg. Send it on its way. Put a message in the bottle. Throw it in the water. Let it reach our shores. Let us know inside the comments what you guys think about the review and the movie itself. If you've seen it, it is a great movie that I recommend that you at least check out to see for yourself if you like it or don't like it. If it's better or worse than any other horror movies, I want to thank you, Brandon, for being a guest here on the show, and hopefully we'll see you inside of the future considering you haven't seen vanguard to everybody else we will see you guys another time and this has been another exciting episode of filmatic no, no, no. Late. yeah take care take, yeah timing we say that the same filmatic hey listen no. michael michael stop I, <laughs> hit the credits hit the credits <laughs>